All right, this week we're gonna go with my cone-headed Tenet 2. Um, this is one that I changed up just a little bit. Um, as you can see, we got the change in venue here again. Uh, we were filming in the back room. We're actually just outside of the kitchen now. I'm pretty sure that I'm one of the few guys in this world that can get away with putting a fly tying bench in the living room slash kitchen, whatever it is. Um, thanks, Christy. <laughs> um, Lee, whenever you come up this time, you're not going to have a choice. There's three bedrooms open now, so you're going to be sleeping in the... Next time you're up here to fish, you're going to be sleeping in the bedroom. There's... The couch is not an option. So we're going to go ahead and get zoomed in, and we're going to do, like I said, the Conehead Tenant 2. Um, for the longest time, I was really big on the fish skull heads. I love those things. Um... I've kind of gone away from them. They kind of fell out of favor with me. I, I like these tungsten cone heads a lot more. I think it dances a little bit better. It it acts a little bit different. And it's the damn things tend to fall off, if, especially if you're drinking cold beer. Trying to put those on. Um, yeah, if you don't get the glue just right, they tend to fall off. So I like these tungsten heads. Beer proof. That's what we'll go with. So we're going to start out on this one. Um, we got a, I'm doing a different color combination on this too. And this one is as flashy as they make them. Um, and I'll explain that here in a little bit once I get a little bit further into the fly and it's a dead spot in the pattern. I'm not explaining what I'm doing. I'll explain why I made it this flashy. But for now, we're just going to start with a brown tail, uh, just like the original. Um, not the brown and yellow, you know, stacked tail that I did on the original tent too. That was the first video that I ever did, actually. Looking back on it, it turned out like shit. No, yeah. it, it turned out bad. But, uh, <laughs> that's all right. Learn as you go, right? So we're going to take two gold strands of flashaboo on this one. We're going to turn this over. Same as always, nothing new on this. We're going to take four strands on my side, four on the camera side. Tie this in, double it over. And trim this. We're going to throw our second stack of marabou on top. Lay this over the first stack. If you're going to... Usually I try to go just a little bit longer. I mean, barely even noticeable to the naked eye. Just a little bit longer on this top section of the tail um, even if you want I, I like it just a little bit longer doesn't matter one bit it's just a personal preference that's just how I tie them in and then we'll take this up to retain some some bulk and maybe a little bit of taper go ahead and trim this off internal flash on the fly. Now this is where it gets really, really flashy on this one. Um, we're going to take some gold UV on this and when I did the original one it was just the it was just the uh, brown UV. I mean it was uniform the entire way. It was all brown. This one we're going to do and it, it has a ton of flash. When you see this in the water it, it sticks out like a sore thumb. You can see this damn thing from space. Um, but I did this for a reason. I was sitting on a Blackfoot one day, and uh, it was a real sunny day. Wasn't picking up a lot of fish. Uh, actually, I probably didn't pick up maybe one or two. And I'm sitting there, I'm watching. If anyone's ever been to the Blackfoot, you can 
any portion of that river, you can sit at the very top of a pool. And if you're elevated, you can look down, you can damn near see the bottom. And I was just sitting there watching a pool, and I'm watching a couple of whitefish feed on the bottom. And every time they turned to the side, it was just an obnoxious flash that came from that fly. And it got me thinking about changing it up and looking differently at the tenant too. So this is where the big flash came in on this. I mean, for a bright sunny day, this you, you really can't go wrong with this pattern. Um, the, the original would, would still be fine. I mean, you're still throwing UV on the body and everything. It would still reflect a decent amount of light, but this one goes overboard. It, it, it takes on a, a life of its own in the water. It really does. And we dull it down a little bit with the overwings, but when, when, when it kicks to the side or when you're jigging it or whatever it is, it, it really has a, a ton of flash. Normally, I don't like a, a lot of flash on my flies, but for the bright sunny days, um, it, it seems to do better than the duller patterns. So this is what we're going to go with. I'm just going to get this UV tied in. We're going to tie this off. Leave yourself about an eighth of an inch before the eye of the hook. Peel all of this stuff back. And you'll see with this gold UV, um, I don't have the brown readily available, but there's just so much more bulk in this. There's just more fibers per per wrap and everything. And it just, it really fills out a lot more than the just standard brown. So, you'll notice it has a, a lot more bulk when you're fishing it. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take two rubber legs and this is the, uh, let me get this tied in, I'll look at the package, make sure I got it right here. Gold, amber, and black color that we're tying in here. I like these. Uh, they just offset. They match with so many different colors aesthetically. You can tie in whatever color you want. It really doesn't matter. This is just one of the ones that I settle on. And then we're going to go with the really wispy brown overwing for the fly, for the for the back half of this. Save this portion. Let me make sure that I'm in frame. Save all this junk. That's going to be your skirt. Don't peel too much of it away. And we're going to throw this right over the top. Like I said, this is going to dull down the... It's going to dull down some of the gold UV that you have. But when it kicks to the side or you know I mean the majority of the time what the fish are actually going to be able to see is the underside it's not really going to dull that down but to use the fisherman it's not going to look as flashy as as it would if you didn't have this on it so we'll go ahead and get rid of that there's our overwing Go ahead and whip finish. This is the back portion of your fly. Get a quick whip finish in. We're going to trim these rubber legs. Good to go there. And then I'm going to find a piece of straw here. I'm just going to throw this right over the top, that way the legs, everything else is out of my way. I'm not going to be interfered with the rest of the way through this fly. Go ahead and color up your thread real quick. Don't drop your pen cap. Then we're going to go to our front portion. I already have the wire and the tungsten head pre-tied in. This is a uh, on the original, I did a two and four Daiichi 2461. This is a 
and you can vary the sizes all, all you want. It doesn't really matter. I mean, there's some of them I'll do in a six and a six just to scale it down just to be a smaller, more slender pattern. Um, this one is a, this is a 24-61-1. One. The back hook is a two. Um, what, whatever size you really want to do, I mean, it's, it's, it's entirely up to you depending on the, the river that you're fishing, depending on, you know, uh, what what the bait fish look like in in your river system just tailor it to what you need and my wires twisted a little bit we got the two red beads we're gonna throw our back hook in we're gonna bring this around Take about the same distance that your beads have, and I don't like how that's sitting, so I'm going to pull this back out. Same distance that your two red beads have is going to be the distance that you use in between your eye and your back red bead. Go ahead and get this tied in real quick. It's just going to be a really quick two or three loose wraps. And we'll take a look, see how everything looks. Give it a quick spin. It's going to be tracking straight back. We're good to go. And then really go ahead and cinch down. Your wire's in place now. Everything's good to go. bring this the rest of the way through and we'll take this excess wire and just tuck it back that's going to help with our taper just slightly I mean really once you get all your material tied in it's really not going to make a damn bit of difference but it does help a lot it does help fill it out just a little bit then we're going to take these excess portion or take the excess portion of the marabou that we used for our overwing it was a really nice wispy piece and then we're just going to clean this up a little bit, bust off some of these pieces and then this is going to be our overwing. I'm going to do as always one on my side, one on the camera side. This is just going to cover up, this is just a skirt, it's going to cover up our beads, it's going to cover up our connection, help with a little bit of bulk, a little bit of taper through the rest of the fly. Same thing, we'll take the other side, bust this off, and this will be on the camera side. Cover this up, you can see our beads have disappeared, they're gone. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, uh, some of that stuff, the coloration's off a little bit on that one, but it's still going to cover up our connection. It's not perfect, I'll live with it. I'll live with it. We're going to go ahead back and tie in our gold UV again. take this just probably an eighth inch or so in front of the bead and remember we got a, we got a lot of materials that we're going to tie in uh, before we finish this fly off so leave yourself a decent amount of space with this gold UV give two or three wraps pinch your skirt give it a quick anchor wrap and then two or three after just Peel all your fibers back, get them out of the way, give another anchor, two or three anchor, all the way up to where your thread's at, two or three and anchor. So I get one more set in here, we'll call this good. That looks pretty good right there, and it's still going to give me enough room to get the rest of my material on.
probably could have went a little bit more with the UV. I mean, we're we're right about there. I mean, it, it's it's pretty dang close. We're we're gonna call that good. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our rubber legs. We're gonna take a set of three on this one. We did two on the back. We're gonna do three on the front hook. Just progressing a little bit as we go. Get your figure eight on here. Make sure that all of your legs are good. Just give these a quick spin. Make sure everything's sitting how you want it before you tighten this down. Go one, two wraps in front and then really give it a really, really tight pinch. And that's going to just set your rubber legs exactly how you want them. I'm going to go ahead and cut these right now and get them out of my way. I'm going to take the straw from the back side. If it'll come out of there and I'm going to fill this up. Actually what I'm going to do first before I do that is I'm going to put my overwing on the front portion. This way I have my distances and everything worked out. What I want is for this front overwing to marry right over top when this is wet it's going to be a seamless transition on the brown. I'm going to cover up the skirt. I'm going to go into the back overwing. But it's not too much of an overwing to where it's just going to flip to the side and going to mess up my connection or it's going to mess up the articulation. It's just enough. So we're going to go maybe a quarter of an inch past the front section of the overwing. Or the what would it be? Our, our first overwing is what we'll do, the back, the back section. Now, we still have a little bit of work to do on this. Make sure that it's looking half decent. Yeah, we look all right. Look all right. So we're going to get rid of all of this stuff. This is going to be out of our way. We're going to be able to focus entirely on just building the head of this. What I'm going to do now is take some Senyo's UV or Senyo's laser dub. Don't get aggressive on this. Make it very slender. Um, you'll see. Uh, take a little bit more than that. So we'll go. And I'm not even going to clean this up in the comb. I'm just going to take this. I'm going to pinch this. This is going to be my top portion. Just get a quick piece right here and we're going to do two stacks of this. We're going to do one. I'm going to do some red which I forgot to get out. There's a little red portion and this is just a throat, um, a, a target point if you will. It's nothing if, if you want to omit it completely you really can. It, it doesn't really matter. I just think it brings a little bit of life to the pattern. It just gives a little bit of extra, just stands out a little bit when you throw this red in there. And there we go. Now I'm going to take tan on the bottom so it follows with the color uh, with the gold UV. I'm going to take this tan, just run it through the comb one time, that's all I really need. Tan goes up, this is on the bottom, and then I'm going to get one more wrap of each color, one on top, one on the bottom. And this should sink pretty close to your tungsten head. When we did the fish gall, you didn't really have to worry about it too much because your fish gall was going to cover all of this stuff up. I mean, we're going to be sitting right next to the head right now, but you don't want it so bulky that the UV takes over everything else. So, I mean, just play around with your proportions a little bit. If you, if, if you tie one and you look at it and you're not too happy with it, um, you know, take less or add more, whatever, whatever you need. 
but just don't make it too bulky. And there we go. The last thing that we're going to do on this is we're going to actually take this out. I'm going to make just a pure mess out of this for a minute until I put the finishing touches on with the with the tungsten head. Like I said, it's just a little bit different from the skull. There we go. I'm going to, I'm going to just trap all of this right now. It's going to be out of my way. That'll let me focus entirely on the head of this. And I'm going to take gold ice dub. Just do a quick dubbing loop. And find my tool that's over here. half hitch and this is just to cover up the space that you have between the laser dub and your tungsten head and it secures your tungsten head a little bit more just going to take some gold ice dub I'm going to take a generous amount of this and I'm just going to throw it in my loop spread this out some give it a spin And I'm just filling in all of this excess that I have. That way my head's not going to spin. Everything's going to be nice and clean. I'm not worrying about the, or I'm, I'm not going to have to worry about that tungsten head wanting to move back because I filled everything in. I mean, this material is packed in there pretty tight. And this gives you just like a little bit of a collar on your on your fly. It finishes it out really nice and that that gold kind of marries into the brown and into the tan. It means so much to the fish. It really does. So now that we have all that, I'm going to give a quick whip finish right behind the head. If you want you can throw a little bit of glue in there. Um, it's really not necessary because this material is so packed in. And then the last thing that I'll do is I'll just take and trim this right back, my marabou, right back along my overwing. And then same thing on the underneath section. I'm just going to take this. I don't have a marabou to be a gauge, but I'm just going to take and push my scissors right through it. It's a nice, it's not a clean cut, but it's a nice smooth transition through everything. And let me get everything I want just before I do the final rotation. That way everyone can see our finished product. Make sure my rubber legs are where I want them to be. That looks pretty good. Everything's pretty clean on this one. There you can see there is the finished Conehead Tenet 2. Um, like I said, bright day fly. It's a very, very good attraction pattern. Um, just a little bit different than the fish skull one that I did, but not there's, there's not a pile of difference. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm leaning more toward these tungsten heads nowadays. It takes a little bit more to get everything uh, packed in and you have to add the UV or the uh, uh, ice stub so you can just cover all your stuff up. It's not like you're throwing the fish all over top and then that's going to cover up all of your uh, previous materials. But that's what we have for the flashy Tenet 2, the cone head. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments on this one, leave them with me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next fly.